Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here. And if you've been playing Pokemon Sword and Shield and you've caught any one of these beasties, you may well be thinking, how do I evolve them? Because yes, just like every previous Pokemon game, there are certain Pokemon that do not evolve just by leveling up. They have specific requirements. Some of them just evolve in completely different ways. And we're going to, to take you through all of the new ones here. This is only the new Galar Pokemon. Otherwise, we'd be here forever. So don't expect Eevee to show up anytime soon. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you just want to find one particular beastie out of this lot, in which case you can find timestamps to specific Pokemon's evolutions in the video description and indeed the top comment, because some people are allergic to descriptions. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Let's start things off with Galarian Yamask, one of the most complicated evolutions in the game, for reasons that will become immediately apparent when I explain them. You can find Galarian Yamask primarily on Route 6, just south of the town of Stowonside, and he'll be out in the overworld so you can just see him with your eyes, it's easy. Once you've got him, well, let's just go through it step by step because this is a weirdo one. You need to reduce its HP significantly, it appears to be by at least 49 points, but we'll get onto that more in a minute, and then you need to pass through through this stone structure in the dusty bowl part of the wild area. And that's it, it'll just stop you in your tracks and it'll evolve, it's weird. Taking that damage can be a little bit difficult, so we've got a method to make it simpler for you. Get yourself a Focus Sash and a Poker Doll, and give the Focus Sash to your Yamask to hold, and put it first in your party. Find a Pokémon that is significantly more powerful than your Yamask and battle it. Make sure you're not in an area that is hailing, otherwise your Yamask will just faint. Get hit by the Pokémon, which will hopefully cause Yamask to take massive damage. The Focus Sash will activate and be used up. Your Yamask will be left with one HP, and that's just dandy. Use the Poké Doll to escape from the fight without taking any more damage, and then return to the Dusty Bowl part of the wild area, and pass underneath this stone formation that we showed previously, and it'll just start evolving into a Runarigus. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Next up, let's have a look at the delightfully adorable little Snom. You can find Snom primarily on the northern half of Route 8, known as Steamdrift Way, which is just south of Surchester. You can find them milling about in the overworld, in the grassy patches, so just keep an eye out for one. They're a little bit harder to see because they're so small, but you'll be fine, you'll find one. In order to evolve it, you're gonna have to become very good friends with your Snom uh, by raising its friendship level, if you can believe such a thing. The easiest way we found to do this is to just go into your camp and just make curry after curry after curry with your snom in your party and you can also like wave the the feathery thing around that's pretty good too once your snom is significantly friendly towards you you're gonna have to wait for night to fall in game or you can just change the clock on your switch in the system settings we won't tell anyone and then level it up one more time with a rare candy or whatever but this will not work during the day it has to be night time do all that and hey presto you've got yourself a frosmoth the only thing we will say just as a little addendum is uh, snom has basically no moves and Frozmoth may not have many moves even when evolved so uh, go to the Pokemon Center and chat to the uh, the move tutor to get it to remember some moves primarily quiver dance thank us later <laughs> Next up is the unassuming little Applin, which can be found primarily on Route 5 just east of Turfield. These things won't be wandering around in the wild though, instead you're gonna have to look for exclamation marks appearing in grassy patches and walking into them. They're just in the grass, you can't see them in the overworld. Interestingly, this little critter has two possible evolutions and which one you get depends entirely on which version of the game you have, sword or shield. Having said that, whichever one you've got, the process is basically identical. Once you reach the town of Hammerlock, you'll need to travel west past the Pokemon Center until you reach the point that you can see well, in the video, you'll see this chap and you want to talk to him and he'll ask whether he can take your Applin, but do not worry, it is not permanent and you will get the Applin back. I had a little mini panic attack the first time I did this, but it's all good. You'll get it back. Once the little cutscene is finished, if you're playing Sword, he'll give you a Tart Apple, and if you're playing Shield, he'll give you a Sweet Apple. Using a Tart Apple from Sword on your Applin will give you a Flapple, and using a Sweet Apple from Shield on your Applin will give you an Appleton instead. You can also find your version's specific Apple in the wild area if you're very, very lucky. They are not terribly common, but they are out there. Unfortunately, you can't get the sweet apple in sword, or indeed the tart apple in shield. It just doesn't happen, so you'll have to get trading. 
Now let's move along to Milsery or Milgury. I, I don't know which one. I'm guessing Milsery. You can find these beasts primarily on Route 4, just south of the town of Turfield. And you won't be seeing them in the overworld. Walking about, you have to look out for the exclamation marks in the fields of grain instead. Once you've got one to evolve it, you're going to need to get your hands on one of a kind of sweet item, and there are loads to choose from. You can find these sweets by battling and winning in one of the many battle cafes found in Galar. There's one in Motorstoke, Hammerlock, and Winden, so take your pick. Once you've got one of these sweets, you need to give it to your Milstery to hold like any other held item, and then there's a weird thing you gotta do. You need to rotate the left analog stick a few times until your character starts twirling on the spot. I'm not making this up. Once you've done that, your Milstery will begin to evolve into an Alchemy. But there are an awful lot of different kinds of Alchemy. The type you get is determined by how long you spin for, in what direction, and whether it's night or day, and what sweet you give them, and the sweet is the easiest thing to work out because it's in there. I think there is. Let's move on to a nice, simple, chilly little contender, Galarian Darumaka, who can be found primarily on Route 8, just south of Surchester, and Route 10, just south of Winden. And only in Pokemon Sword, you can't get this guy in Shield. Once again, you won't see it roaming around in the overworld, you're gonna have to go into the grassy patches with and look for those exclamation marks, as you can see. Evolving it is really simple, you just need an Ice Stone. Having said that, Ice Stones aren't that easy to find. However, you can find one reliably in the wild area in this sort of strange standing stone circle in the Lake of Outrage. Alternatively, you can speak to the digging duo who can be found in Bridge Field, and although it'll cost you some watts, you can, yeah, it's not that hard. Once you've got it, just use the Ice Stone on the Darumaka and you'll have yourself a Galarian Darmaniton. And I think that's the first time I've ever said that out loud. Another simple one, Galarian Zigzagoon, and more importantly, Galarian Linoon. Galarian Zigzagoon can be found pretty much all over the wild area, but you're better off looking on routes 2 and 3, they're not hard to find. As for Galarian Linoon, well, you can just evolve a Galarian Zigzagoon by getting it to level 20, but you can also find them just out in the wild area as well, depending on how far you are through the game. Getting that Galarian Linoon into an Obstagoon, however, is not as straightforward. You're gonna need to get it to level 35 at the very least, but even that that may not make it evolve. That's because this thing can only evolve into an Obstagoon at night. You'll have to wait for the sun to go down or just change this to the clock in the system settings. It doesn't care. And then use a rare candy or just level it up any other way and you'll have yourself an Obstagoon. Nice and simple. Moving swiftly onto one that is not quite so simple as some of the others we've looked at, Galarian Farfetch'd. You can find them primarily on Route 5, just east of the town of Turfield, but only in Pokemon Sword. If you have Shield, you're gonna have to trade one over from someone with a copy of Sword. Once you've caught it, have a look and make sure it's holding a leak as a held item, which is quite common, uh, but if it isn't, just keep catching more until you get one that does, as otherwise it's gonna make your life a whole lot more difficult. To evolve it, all you're gonna need to do is perform three critical hits with it in a single battle. This can be aided by having them hold the leak as it'll boost the likelihood of said critical hits happening. Can you see why we said you should do it? If you're relatively early in the game, then this shouldn't be too difficult, um, but you can certainly increase your chances and make the thing a whole lot simpler by finding a trainer and battling them instead rather than a wild Pokemon, because, you know, they'll have more than one Pokemon and you can just keep getting the critical hits. It's easy peasy. It doesn't really matter which move you use as long as it inflicts damage. If you're later in the game and Galarian Farfetch just passed you by for some reason, it's gonna be a lot trickier as, realistically, you're not gonna have any similarly leveled trainers around you left that haven't already been defeated in order to get as many critical hits as you can before defeating the enemy. And indeed, just going up against a really powerful Pokémon, they're just gonna body your Farfetch'd and you're gonna have a bad time. If you are in this situation, what we suggest is going to the wild area and finding a fishing spot. Fish in the fishing spot with a strong Pokémon that the head of your party, just in case your Farfetch can't run away properly, until you fish up a Magikarp. In the late game, these things can be, well, as you can see, level 60, but as they're Magikarp, they're still phenomenally weak. Switch your Farfetch'd in and start hitting the Magikarp with any old move again, as long as it inflicts damage. You may get some bother from the enemy using Flail and Tackle, but it's also just as likely to use the move Splash, which does absolutely nothing, giving you a free hit. It's very, very tasty. Keep healing your Farfetch'd 
damaged if it needs it, and you should get three critical hits before the fight is over. If you're having trouble from keeping your Farfetch from getting knocked out, primarily due to Flail, you can always disable one of the Magikarp's moves, just don't disable Splash, and even paralyze it for added benefit, and it'll make your life even easier. Regardless of how you get the three critical hits, once the battle is over, your Farfetch will evolve into the gallant Surfetched. What a handsome little devil. Another simple one, thankfully, we're going to be looking at Clobopus, who can be found primarily on Route 9, just west of Spikemouth. This is an odd situation because whilst you can just catch its evolution grapple-locked on the same route, they, they, they are an absolute nightmare to capture. I don't know whether it's just me, but th that thing was hard. I mean, I did it, but it was hard. Clobopus, on the other hand, don't put up nearly as much of a fight, and evolving Pokémon is fun. To get your Clobopus to evolve, you're going to need to teach it the move Taunt, which is done so naturally at level 35. That's all well and dandy, but many Clobopus you'll encounter will be already higher than that level already, and may not have the move Taunt, which is bad. If you catch one and it does already know the move Taunt, just level it up once and it'll evolve into a Grapplock. It's as simple as that. If they don't, however, you're in a minor pickle. Thankfully, it's a pickle that can be easily rectified. All you need to do is go to a Pokemon Center. Go talk to the move tutor on the left-hand side and ask him to make your Clobopus remember Taunt. Alternatively, you could just use TR37 if you're afraid of Pokemon Centers for some reason. We're not here to judge. Whichever you decide, it's once again just a simple matter of leveling it up one more time, and bingo bango, you've got yourself a potent little grapplocked. Another simple one with a little asterisk, we're talking about Sinisty, which can be found primarily in Glimwood Tangle, which is just south of the town of Bolonlia. Pokemon as a whole really don't like showing their faces in this area, so your best bet is to just rummage around through the tall grass and running into the exclamation marks. Once you've nabbed a Sinisty, you're going to need to source a special item in order to make it evolve, namely the Cracked Pot. Thankfully, you can buy one from the market vendor in Stowonside. He's the chap on the right that you can see me talking to right now. How about that? Irritatingly, his inventory cycles daily, so it's possible he won't have a cracked pot for you to buy, in which case you're going to need to keep coming back day after day. It's a nuisance, but it's just the way it is. Once you've got your hands on one, all you need to do is use it on your Sinisty, and hey presto, you've got yourself a Poltygeist! Maybe. You see, it's it's possible that a cracked pot won't work on your Sinisty because there's technically two variants of the Pokemon and not that you'd ever know it. If a cracked pot doesn't work, you're going to have to check with the vendor every day again for the much rarer chipped pot. This is because your Sinisty is in fact rarer and is the authentic form. Sadly, this doesn't make it any more powerful, just more irritating to evolve. But once you've worked it all out, you'll have yourself a Poltygeist regardless. And if you had to use the chipped pot instead, feel free to flaunt it to your friends because yours is authentic, baby. And lastly, we just want to talk relatively briefly about Toxel, because yes, there's a little something evolution-wise with this one too. You can find these in the wild area, but the easiest way to get one at least to begin with is by just going to the Pokemon Nursery on Route 5 and talking to this breeder that you see here. Once you've got it, it's just a simple case of leveling it up to level 30 and it'll evolve into Toxtricity. So why are we including it? Well, Toxtricity isn't just difficult to pronounce, it also comes in two delicious flavours. The kind of Toxtricity you get is determined by the Toxel's nature. If it happens to be adamant, brave, docile, hardy, hasty, impish, jolly, lax, naive, naughty, rash, quirky or sassy, you'll get the amped form that you can see here. And if its nature happens to be bashful, bold, calm, careful, gentle, lonely, mild, modest, quiet, relaxed, serious or timid, it'll evolve into the low-key form that you can see now instead. The major difference between them, apart from <laughs> the fact that they look different, is the fact that the amped form can learn gear shift, whilst the low-key form can learn magnetic flux instead when they both reach level 52. I don't know why you'd want magnetic flux, but <laughs> fine. One final thing to know, as you get on in the game, you may come across these mint items that essentially change your Pokémon's nature when used, and you might be thinking you can choose which kind of toxicity you get by changing the nature. No, it doesn't work. It 
it, it just doesn't work. Your Toxel's original nature is the deciding factor on what kind of form it evolves into. You can't change it, or at least we found no way to do it. You, it's, 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 it's set in stone. It's genetics, baby. And there you have it. Yes, Toxel's kind of a sort of a footnote, really, but it, it still felt like it was worth mentioning. It's kind of evolutionary and kind of weird, and I just thought, meh, completeness. I hope you learned something. Maybe you just watched this for the sake of it. Maybe you just like Pokemon and you just clicked on it because YouTube and it stops it stops the bad thoughts thank you so much for watching if you like this video then why don't you take a pounding from that subscribe button and push it under a weird arch why game freak and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely nintendo related content thank you again for watching bye bye oh, what?